Hey, well, welcome to episode 60 of Tuesday Tech Talks. Um, I'm Chris, I'll be your hostess today. Clint Stevens, who is in, I can't remember where he's, no, he's in Panguitch today, and he's doing infinity science out there with a, in a classroom, so they're having fun. As I said, I'm Chris Hott, and I help with Canvas and, and media and whatever else I can help teachers with, okay? Today, we're going to talk about New Year's resolutions, okay? How many of you have those New Year's resolutions? I'm, I'm going to keep my closet cleaner. I'm going to spend time to organize things. I'm going to all these things that I want to do this year, but then you end up not doing them. You don't clean out the closet, so you're fighting it all year trying to find things, right? And you spend more time trying to find things then you know you're spending time effectively working and so and this is something that's really hard for me to just say stop I have to just stop and reorganize these bookmarks or take some time to clean this up so that going forward I'm going to have extra time so and that's a tough thing for me to do it's like okay I'll fix that later I'll fix that later and then you just end up fighting with something all year long because you don't stop and fix it so we're going to go through a couple of things you may already be doing, uh, so hopefully some will be new to you, and we'll go over a couple of things just to help you kind of reorganize and refresh your Canvas page. Okay, so feel free to put something in the chat. If you have any questions, I'm going to put the link to uh, this slideshow or in the YouTube playlist, and I'm also going to put the link for the role, so make sure you guys get your Midas credit. It's really important this week because with Clint not being here, um, he won't know that you were here unless you fill out that form, okay? So, like I said, do you find, you know, more time just getting frustrated because you can't find things? How about do your students repeatedly ask you, what are they supposed to do? Because maybe you're just using assignments in Canvas and not using modules. Um, do you have issues with grade sync not working? Or do you have too many things with the same name? So you're opening up courses. No, that's not the right one. And are just too much stuff on your dashboard. Any of that sound familiar, Denise and Denise? So far, I haven't had too big of a problem with grade sync. Good, glad to hear that. Okay, so let's try it. I am going to go into a Canvas course. And so I do have everything that I'm gonna talk about in these slides, but rather than show you on the slides, I was gonna show you in a Canvas. So everything I'm gonna show you has um, a slide for it right here. So first thing we're gonna look at is account notifications. And if I look right here, you wanna make sure you have an image. It's nice if it's your picture of your face. So especially if you have online kids, so you should all know how to do that. But notifications are a big thing. What I find is a lot of teachers have too many notifications set. And so then they just ignoring them all. Okay. So figure out how you want and what you want to come to you and teach your kids to do this too. Because if you're getting spammed from Canvas emails, then you probably tend to ignore them and the kids are just the same. So as you come down and look through here, you can set them at a, an account or a course level. Most people just do an account because then it covers all the courses, but you can drill down. Um, so if you want to get an email when there, you change a due date, then you would put weekly summary. Uh, if you want to get it, don't want to get an email, if you change any grading policy, then it's notifications off. You'll see if you click on here, you can say notify me immediately. That means you're going to get an email every time a student submits something or whatever one of these choices are. You could get a daily summary. So that's at the end of the day, you said this is all the activity or a weekly summary, same thing, or just turn the notifications off. Most of mine I have off because I'm in Canvas every day. So I see it on my to-do list and I, and I see those things. As far as your, your kids are concerned, um, some of the things that I would make sure that they have on are some of the announcements, okay? So you wanna make sure that if you send an announcement, the, the kids get it. So you may wanna look through here and kind of you know look and see global announcements. I want the kids to have those. So if we send something out an announcement, they get an email notification as well. So what are those important things that you need to know? And if you don't need to know, then turn it off so you get less emails. Make sense? Yes. Okay. 
All right, so the next thing is the dashboard. Now I've seen a ton of teachers' dashboards. Some are, let me make this bigger. Some are just full of courses, sandbox courses, courses they haven't used, all sorts of different things. So you can organize your dashboard to show just what you want on it. If you don't wanna show all those things, you don't have to. Um, and you're probably familiar with the courses and all courses and we'll look at that. But how many of you have clicked on these three little dots right here? With these three little dots, you can put a nickname on your course. And I'll show you where that shows when we go to courses and all courses. You could nickname it, it only appears to you. So your students can nickname theirs, it only appears to them. So this only appears to the one user that changes this. So if you change this name right here, it's not going to change for the students. You would wanna change that in settings if you wanted it to look different. This is just a nickname for you, okay? You can also move them if you wanna move them up and down or you can just drag and drop, okay? You can also change the color overlay on it if you don't like that, that color or if you come up here to the three dots, you can say uh, color overlay and then you can take it off and see it looks like that. Okay, so those are just some little tools. Did you guys know about those? Yes or no? A couple, but not all of them. Okay, so this gets really handy because if you're not teaching that course, why do you want it on your dashboard, right? That just looks like a big old stack of work to do. And if some of these courses, you know, this was from summer of 2022, if you're not using them, then, you know, you don't want them up there. And like this course is a semester two, so you don't need it up here yet, but you're going to need it, right? So if you go to courses and then all courses, then you have a list of all of your courses. And remember when we made that nickname, there's where the nickname shows up because once you start getting a lot of courses and even you come down here in your past enrollments, Language Arts 11, Language Arts 11, Language Arts 11, you can see which year it was. But if your district doesn't uh, have a, a good naming convention, you can see we started, hey, welcome. You can see we started kind of naming these a little bit better because up here, the year is in the title. But you can see as districts, when we first started doing Canvas, we didn't realize the importance to teachers that in this name, that there was something that differentiated. So if you went to go copy a course or to go find something, you knew where to go. Okay. So just feel free to shout out or put something in the chat if you have any questions. Um, so the stars here work to say what's on the dashboard. So if I don't want that semester two right there, I can just unclick that, but I'm not gonna do that to this teacher. I had to use a live course, so I had all the features I wanted to show. Um, but you can just put the stars on the ones that you want. And then when you go back to your dashboard, only the ones that are starred are going to show, okay? Um, even if it's the enrollment ends and the, you know that class is over, if you don't unstar it, it's always gonna be there. Think of it as bookmarking things. Okay, so then if we go back to our dashboard, then we would see more or less courses right there. Okay, so we're gonna go into this course. Another thing is the navigation. What's really confusing for kids if there's too much on the navigation. And I think we've, we've pretty much you know, worked to train and show people how to set that navigation. You really only wanna have your basics. Some schools have kind of worked together and say, we wanna have these five items. That way there's continuity between courses. So when a student goes from English to math or to consumer sciences, it's similar. It doesn't have to be matchy matchy, but it's similar enough that kids can still navigate their, their way through. And parents, as parents go from class to class, that was a feedback that we got from a lot of parents is this teacher does it completely different than this teacher. Um, so when you come to here, you wanna come down to settings. Okay, and then go to navigation. Oh, but right here, this is where you can change that name that changes it for everybody, okay? Some of you might have this turned off. There's a setting that says allow teachers to rename their courses. So if you can't, then that means your admin has not enabled it. 
Um, and most of you that are with, with SEDC, I've enabled it for all. Okay, so if we come here over to navigation, these show all of the things that are available. So you see, we have things like Galen Context High School, that's a part of our Utah's online library, um, Nearpod, Scribble, all of these things, if you want them to act as kind of like bookmarks and be short links for your kids to be able to go access, then you can put them here and all you have to do is drag them up. So if I do, we'll do, which we'll do Gale in context. So I could just right here say enable, or I could just drag it up. And once I put it up, up there, then it, then it comes up there. Oops, I didn't move it all the way. When it comes up there, so I can drag it. Then you wanna make sure you hit the save button. And then that puts it right here where kids could then click on it and go to it. So if there's a resource that you use frequently, you can do that. And then there's also another tool um, called redirect that's in the settings that you could add your own link. So say if there was a link like Schmoop or something else that, that you wanted kids to go to, then you could add those links there. And by hiding the links, then the kids don't have to see it because I know you all know how to use student view. You can go into student view and look and see what it looks like for the students. But if students don't have that big long page to try and navigate or all those navigation settings, then they're gonna be less confused. Really, if you just have modules and home and maybe announcement, something else, and then your favorite links, that's all you really need. So if I go back to the course, now I wanna talk about um, the difference between assignments and modules. So a lot of uh, teachers will put assignments up here where kids can access it. Okay, so when, we, when a student clicks on assignments, they're just gonna get this big long list of assignments right here. And you really don't want to have to say, okay, I want you to go do this assignment. That's where you do modules. Is everybody pretty clear on the difference between modules and assignment pages? Yes. Okay, great. So you know the difference. Mostly we use assignments for being able to sort for grade sync. So these are gonna be sorted out maybe by the terms. If you have, uh, let's go back to the top, we have tests, uh, essay writing, and then test term three. It's really important that you put that term three, term two test. Because what happens when you go to click on an assignment and to add it to an assignment group, but all your assignments groups are named discussion and quizzes, discussion and quizzes, discussion and quizzes, because they don't say term one, term two, term three. Um, and for PowerSchool, that's a little bit different. For you up in Millard, uh, this is more of an Aspire thing. In PowerSchool, you put them in once a year and they're kind of there all year. Aspire has to do this every quarter. Make sense so far? Okay, so when we sort by assignment groups, we're mostly just sorting by those types of grading groups. So are they assignments? Are they tests? What, what are they? And that's not the kind of group that you would wanna give to kids. So that's why we want to use modules. So if I click on modules, okay, this is what we want our kids to see. So we wanna remove this from the navigation the way that I showed you. Now students can say, okay, here's the syllabus, that's a module. And then this has really nothing to do with how you set things up for grading. This is organizational. And when you use modules as opposed to assignment groups, you have the added benefit of being able to add just about anything you want. So here I have this module of ACT prep resources. So if I click right here, I can add an assignment to that. I can add a quiz, a file, a page a discussion, a text header, which is just a, a line of, of words, an external URL. So if I wanna put a link to somewhere I can, or an external tool, and that's where like Schmoop or some of the, uh, the textbook uh, programs are. So you can add any of those items um, right to it. And then you have a nice module that the kids can see, and then you can uh, move through things sequentially, okay? So far, so good? All right. So we want to paste the role in the YouTube links in for Jackie Johnson. Is that Jackie? 
you just post them back in the chat for me, I'd appreciate it. And then we'll move on. So syncing, okay? Syncing is the biggest thing. Uh, the, the thing I get the most calls on. And honestly, most times that uh, an assignment is not syncing is because it's not in one of these assignment groups. Or maybe you forgot when the term changed and you didn't put it in the right one. Again, it's going to look a little bit different for the uh, PowerSchool users. But a lot of times you'll have an assignment group that won't have this little icon. And then the sync, which is this one, you can tell this one right here is, is ready to sync. This is not turned on. So a lot of times we'll have something that we're trying to sync, but it's in an assignment group that does not have this syncing icon on it. And in able to uh, match those groups up, we come up here to the top and then we say sync SIS categories. So now in Aspire, we would do this to sync. Okay. I just wanted somebody to, uh, Jackie, I just wanted somebody to put the links that I pasted so you could have them for the roll call, but I can do it if not. Thank you. So you have the sync, the SIS categories. And so for Aspire users, they click on this and all we're doing is matching up those discussions, okay? So we're matching those up with the groups that we have in Aspire, okay? With uh, PowerSchool, you're gonna click on this and it's gonna say import assignment groups and it's gonna bring yours in, okay? So that's what makes it really important when you think about using modules to put content in an orderly way to serve it up to kids. Assignments is a way for you to organize it based on the sync. So if we click here over on the grade sync, okay, then this kind of tells us that grades have been syncing. So, um, you know, before you get frustrated, why isn't syncing? You keep hitting that resync button. It's not, come over here and take a look. Because when you look and you click on the completed or there could be an icon that says failed, when you click on it and come right here, warnings and errors, it'll tell you exactly what the problem was. And most likely it's gonna say, this assignment, uh, there was no assignment group found for that assignment. But this can give you a lot of information about your grade syncing. You can look and see how many, oops, got student names, better not show that. You can show how many assignments, how many grades I have been syncing. So you can look at that to see. And so when you're in there, you also wanna make sure that on utilities, you've uh, turned on this nightly sync. Okay, and if you ever forget how to sync, then you can come over here to the help. And if you come right here to grade passback, it gives you the instructions in Miller. It's got the power school, the rest it has the Aspire instructions. You can go right there. And you can also look at this frequently asked questions and new features, and that will show, um, and I update that constantly. So if there's new features that come out, then this is the place to go. And if I get a lot of teachers asking a question, then we'll put it in here um, because it, probably everybody else is having that issue. Okay, so that's a way you can keep an eye on your grade sync. And one note, to have this up here in navigation, kids can't see that. So don't worry about, oh, thinking the kids will be able to see that. That's why that student view works really good. So far, so good. Okay, I'm gonna stop acting as a teacher so I can go into a grade book. And I'll go into this class because I didn't wanna show student names. How many of you have used the new grade book filters? Okay. If you come here to apply filters, then you can filter things by different types. I can say all sections. Um, I can do, just show me by modules, by assignment groups, by student groups, by who's submitted. Um, when you have sections of students, that'll show up too. And then you could um, show, just show me first period grades or second period grades. So use this to your advantage um, so that you can, you don't have to look, scroll, you know, by the time you get to the end of the year, you're having to, to do the, the scroll and scroll and scroll to get there. If you come up here to settings right here and you go to view options, then you can say hide unpublished assignments. That way you don't have to see those 
um, unpublished assignments. And now they go all the way to the back because we've set up an extra grading period. But this is also where you can put your grade posting policy. Do you want the grades to be entered um, so the kids can see them? Or do you want to enter them and then have to send them up to Gradebook, not to Aspire? And then we have late policies. So if you want to set a grade for missing submissions, or if you want to uh, deduct for late, okay? But use these filters and kind of get used to those because then you don't have to look at so much of this real estate that's not useful. You can get right to just what you need to do. This one looks a little bit different because they're not dated. It's kind of a practice course. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna, yes. any questions? Okay, there's the role in there for you, Jackie. I think that's Jackie's. I'll put the role and then the YouTube playlist. All righty, so any questions on any of that? Okay, again, on this right here, if you open up the help, you can have the grade pass back, but then this is that frequently asked questions that I was talking about. And so these have all sorts of links to some of the new features that come out. If you haven't checked out the My VR Spot for videos, that is awesome. Here's a link on how to use the enhanced grade books. Okay. So let's go back to the slideshow. Everybody see my slideshow okay? Yes. Okay. So in the beginning, I'd said all the things that I just showed you, there's a slide for. So it kind of has an image and it kind of shows what we were talking about. But then at the end, and I'm probably getting dizzy going too fast, huh? Um, I also put in a video. It just came out today on the Google assignment, LTI 1.3. That's a great tool for helping to organize and keeping all your content in your Google Drive. And using your Google Drive with Canvas is awesome. Okay. Oops. I didn't want to play that. Okay. And then for mobile devices, this was just an extra bonus. Um, you might want to check and see, and there's a way that you can see how it looks, because sometimes when you embed really big pictures or put tables, it doesn't always go, uh, it doesn't match in the, in the uh, app, so sometimes the text gets all wonky, so this is a way that you can test, because we're finding out that more and more kids are doing Canvas on their uh, apps, on their phones, which amazes me because I remember when we started doing eBooks 10 years ago, we thought, who's going to read an eBook on their phone? Well, now kids are doing Canvas, right? So let me, okay. So we showed you all those slides. Each one of those things that we talked about, there's a link right here that takes you to the instructions because I know that was really fast and quick. Um, so this takes you to all of the instructions so that you can go back and kind of, kind of look and see. The Canvas community is a great place to look for help. And remember, you also have that 24 seven Canvas support. Okay, any questions? No, thank you, Rob. Okay, okay, so just a few things coming up before I let you go then. So January Choice Board, Clint's made this up. Um, if you haven't joined the Google Workspace for Education group, it is so amazing. So many great tips that Matt sends out. But here is a link where you can go to the choice board. And if you want to get your Google on, um, that's a great place to go. And then next month's schedule, Clint's going to do my VR spot plus YouTube. If you're in a district that you're constantly getting filter, filtered or you don't want your kids seeing those next videos or you know getting lost on YouTube, my VR spot is great and it integrates so nice with Canvas. And then Clint's going to do Nearpod video for formative assessment. So again, you can watch them all here. And remember, if you go back and watch some and you show how you've implemented something and send that to Clint, he'll give you some Midas time for that. Um, you know, we get information from teachers and from our peers all the time. If you are on Twitter, uh, UTED chat is great. It happens every Wednesday. Um, always great topics to talk about. We forgot to put tomorrow's topic on there. We'll find it. Um, anytime, uh, PD, UEN Homeroom podcast, some great podcasts by Danny Sloan and Matthew Winters. You can listen to those when you have time. And then make sure you sign the role. 
and uh, you can get the videos here. Uh, once Clint posts them up, it'll be tomorrow. And we both hope to see you next week. Okay, so Chris, Yep. how do we get to the slideshow? Oh, I didn't put it in the link, did I? Let me put it in the link right now. Let me put the link in the chat. Well, last week he did the choice board again, but I don't remember how he told us to get to the choice board. If we wanted yeah, to you, yeah, you need the, the slideshow. So let me grab that real quick. I accidentally closed that tab. And there we go. Okay, here is the link to the slideshow. Okay, and then we've got the link for the roll in there. And then also the link to the YouTube playlist. Let me check Clint's list to make sure I got everything. Topics, yep, I got it. Let me go ahead and turn the recording off now. Okay, thank you all for being here. Thank you. Here we go. Hey, Chris. Yep. It's Jackie. Hi, Jackie.